Hey everybody, it's me, Carol. Um, welcome back to Refunction Crafts. Um, today I'm gonna make a video on um, making these tiny little appliques. I really, really enjoy making these and I had made some recently and showed them in a video that I did. And so I had a couple of people ask me if I would do a video on them. So I pulled together some different laces and things, um, embellishments today. And I thought I would go ahead and do that for you. Um, so hopefully this will be a fairly quick um, video. But these are really a lot of fun to do. Um, for me, very therapeutic. Um, because you get to use all of your own creativity and really put some pretty stuff together. So that's what we're going to be making today. And in this process, um, part of what I'm going to be doing is I did another video on making my little ribbon roses. And that would be these little roses here. And I just happened to be at the Dollar Tree the other day. And, you know, I have trouble sometimes when you buy the, the inexpensive ribbons and things, I have trouble finding colors that I like. I like more natural colors. I don't like the really bright, bright, bright pinks and things. I like the, the soft pinks or the mauve kind of dusty pinks. And so they had some ribbon that was this color, which is a darker mauve. And then they had um, this color here, which is a light mauve dusty uh, rose color. And so um, these came out really, really pretty. I made a whole bunch of these roses. And so I thought today in this video, one more time, I would show you guys, I've kind of perfected the, um, the process a little bit. So I'm going to also do one of my um, roses for you in this video. And just to kind of show you, I've got some different bits of lace and things. This is some lace that I got from a friend of mine, uh, Candace. She had sent me a bunch of this lace in different colors. And it's the most gorgeous stuff that I have um, to work with. And I just, I love making things with this lace. Um, so I've cut a few pieces of this off and then I've just got, you know, bits and pieces. I got this from Kiki Sale. I love using these for my small appliques because it's just a, a perfect sized piece. Um, and it, I can really uh, do a lot with it actually. I can still, even though this is small, I can cut it up in smaller pieces. And then I've got, um, I'm not going to use all of it, obviously, but I've got some other little bits and pieces here. And then some bigger, um, bigger lace that I may cut some, some bits off of as well. Um, I also have, let's see, I almost lost that one. I also have just some um, pretty lace. I had bought this at uh, Hobby Lobby a long, long, long time ago. And let me... Let me set these down. And I just thought it was really pretty lace. If I ever had like a pretty box or something to put it on, and I've used it on a few things. But the problem that I found with this is that it's so long that sometimes I, I just can't find the right pieces to use it in, and I really wanted to use a piece of that. I also got this at Hobby Lobby, and this is my last piece that I have left of this. Um, so I thought maybe I would use that in a little something. Um, and then I just have some other little bits and pieces of, uh, you know, trims and things. So I don't know what I'm going to use today, um, but I'll figure that out as I go. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get this all worked out. <laughs> um, sorry if you guys had to look at my belly in front of the camera. I was pushing up against the table to reach things. I've got one of my little lace butterflies that I got from Kiki Sale. And then a little bit of a doily. And this is going to be my base for the applique that I'm going to make today. I think I'm going to move my camera just a little bit closer so that y'all can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I kind of moved my camera back a little bit. So I want to make sure, whoops, that's a little farther out. Not what I wanted to do. Okay, I think that should be good. Okay, 
So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do one of my roses uh, so that you guys can see that process again. Uh, let me see if I can get my light a little bit brighter here. It seems like whatever I just did, I sort of, whoops, almost fell. I thought I darkened my picture, but I didn't. I just had my, my viewer was turned odd, so I couldn't see it very well. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut about, I'm going to say about 14 inches of this ribbon, 13 or 14 inches. You don't want to make it too long because then it'll be too hard to, um, too much for the to pull the the last bit of ribbon through uh, with the needle. I've got my needle here. I've got sort of a larger needle with a bigger eye so that I can actually get the ribbon through it um, when I'm pulling it at the end of the process. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take this little piece of ribbon and I'm going to cut one edge. I'm not cutting it off. I'm just cutting a piece and then I'll go ahead and cut this off so that I can show you about how much I've got. I'm just cutting a little square out and that's what I have. And this ribbon is so light that it's hard to see. Let me get something dark behind it so that you can actually see it. There you go. Um, so that's what I've done. I just cut so that there's one little edge that's sticking out. And I'm just going to take my needle, no thread, there's no thread needed, and I'm just going to start here at the bottom where the tail is, and I'm going to start weaving my needle through. And I'm only taking about, I figured out about uh, maybe three quarters of an inch is about how far I'm going and I'm just going back and forth with my needle. And I hope some of you have um, had the chance to try this because I'm not a big sewer. I can sew, but it's not really my favorite thing in the world to do. Um, and when I saw these, I, I actually put it off and put it off. And then I finally decided I knew these roses were so pretty and I thought, oh, it can't possibly be that easy. And I had some organza ribbon and I thought okay and this is a process you want to do with organza uh, I tried it on some regular fabric ribbon and didn't have a lot of luck maybe it was just the my choice of ribbon um, and then when I get to the end I'm just going to take and put it about a quarter of an inch before the end of the ribbon and then I'm going to flip it over so this is where I just finished uh, poking it through so I'm going to flip my needle over so that my tail is at the top. You can see that there hopefully. So there's my tail and there's the eye of my needle. And I'm just going to put that tail, this is why you need a big eye or a slightly big eye in your needle so that you can get that tail to go through it easily. So. I found this needle the other day. I was using a, a different needle before, and man, was I having trouble getting it through there. So I've just kind of, let me use that compact again. I've just uh, pulled that through, and so there's my tail coming through the needle eye. And all I'm going to do let me get a little closer to you here, is I'm going to put my fingers underneath this bottom section and I'm just going to start spinning my needle. And I found that with this um, ribbon that I bought at the Dollar Tree that I was actually able to spin it a little easier. So I don't, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just that I've learned how to do this better. I don't know. So that's where I'm at now. I've been spinning it just like that and I've got it to where it's got a bud in the center and I'm just going to take and flip my needle upside down and what I've been doing is using my needle nose pliers I grab a hold of my needle and very gently 
And I'm saying gently because if you pull too hard, you're going to pull too much of that tail through and it's going to pull your bud through and it's going to flatten out the center, which is fine. You still want to keep that rose. You don't want to, you don't want to toss it aside or do it over. Um, not necessary because you, those, those roses I found what I've been doing with them. Okay, I've got that all the way in so that there's no tail poking out at the top. So here's what I've got at the top and here's what I've got coming out of the bottom. And what I'm going to do, there we go, I just pulled the rest of that tail through. So this is what I have. Whoops, I'm sorry. This is what I have. And I'm just going to take my handy dandy lighter. I'm going to actually cut a tiny bit of that tail off because it's pretty long. And I'm going to take my lighter and I'm just going to light that tail on fire and let it burn up to the edge and I'm going to press it against the flower. And what that's going to do is it's going to melt the bottom, the tail to the bottom of the flower. And it's going to stay together. It works really, really well. And that's my rose. These are so easy. And once you get the hang of it, you can make a ton of these things all at one time. I made a whole, I've got a little baggie full of them that I was making yesterday while I was watching TV. So um, super fun. And I, the roses to me are absolutely gorgeous. And then you'll see these two um, were a couple that the, the bud kind of pulled through the center. So I just kept those and I put pearls in the middle. And you can also put pearls in the middle of the ones that have the buds if you'd like. Um, it's also very pretty that way. So anyway, so that's my, my organza roses. Uh, again, I found this particular ribbon over at the Dollar Tree I don't have a lot of money to spend right now, so I only bought a couple of, um, you know, a couple of the, the um, what do you call it? the holder? Well, ah, I don't even know what you call it. Anyway, I bought a couple of these, and there's uh, six yards on each one. So you can get a lot of roses out of that. I found that I got 13 to 14 roses out of one um, thing of ribbon. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, and I can use these in just about all my projects because as you all know, I do, I use flowers in pretty much everything I do. So, uh, I'm just going to put my needle through that ribbon so I don't lose it because this is the only needle I have like that. So I definitely don't want to lose it. Okay. So now I've got my little, um, my little backing here and I'm just going to start kind of trying to pick pieces that I want to use. I know I'm going to use some of this lace. So I'm going to take, in fact, I'm going to move in even just a little bit closer with the camera so that you guys can really see what I'm cutting out on this thing. And then in a minute, I'll, I'll pan out a little bit again but I want you to be able to see what I'm cutting off of this. I'm not going to keep a lot of this spirally stuff for this, um, for this uh, applique, but make sure that you, that you keep those pieces that you cut off of these because um, they really are uh, nice to kind of throw. In fact, I will probably use some of those little spirals um, in my end. Uh, product here because they they're good to kind of fit into little places and I'm just cutting around as close as I can get hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here and then as I'm fitting it to the um, to the doily that I'm putting on the bottom I will uh, decide you know if I need to cut more off of it or what have you but when I first get started on these I don't like to cut too much off you know from the get-go because I might want some pieces that you know are sort of hanging over so I try to be mindful of that while I'm 
doing this process. And you can always cut more off, but you can't put it back on when you're done. So, and we're just gonna cut that little piece off. And so that's what I have on that. Okay, and then I have just a few of these little squigglies left over. I'll set those aside in case I wanna use them um, in, the, in the final piece. So, let's see. Okay. Juju, no, no. I think I might cut another little piece of this off. Juju, no barking. Don't you know I'm doing a video? <laughs> they can hear their dad outside. He's out there washing my car. Um, thank goodness, because my car is a disaster. It hasn't been washed in so long. We usually take it to the car wash, but I gotta tell you, money's tight right now, and there will be no car washes for my car for a little while. So he was nice enough to say that he would go ahead and wash it for me. So anyway, he's got his radio going outside and he's out there taking care of that. Um, don't know if I'm gonna use this, but I think what I am gonna do is I'm gonna cut some of these leaves because I do like to use the leaves. This is another um, bit of trim that I got from Kiki's sale. I got to tell you guys, most of the trims and things that I use, that's where I get them. And if you get a chance, please go on over and check out uh, on Facebook, check out Debbie's uh, page because you can find a lot of really great stuff to use in your crafts, particularly when you're making, you know, shabby chic and things like that because um, she, she sells a lot of lace and a lot of bling. Um, I love, love, love her bling. Um, that's kind of my thing, sparkle and bling. And so Debbie has been really um, generous to kind of help me have enough stuff for my projects so that I can keep my channel going <clears throat> and keep busy um, and then I also want to make sure that you all know where you can go if you need uh, pieces for your your projects I do a lot of jewelry boxes and uh, things like that so, so what I've done is I've just cut these little leaves out and then cut the little flower off um, at the top and we'll see what <coughs> excuse me, what parts we decide to use. Um, definitely going to use that one. Again, Kiki Sale. Um, and then I'm going to cut one piece off of this lace trim uh, to use on this as well. And I'm just going to go straight, straight down the middle of this section here and put the rest aside. So I'm just cutting that off. And actually, I'm cutting the, the whole top portion of this off. You know, I'm never sure what to do, you guys. I've had um, both sides. Um, some people say I'm too close to the camera. Some people say I'm not close enough. And so, if you guys would just kind of um, in the comments, if you if you feel like I'm either getting too close or too far away, if you would just let me know, I need to perfect my placement of my camera. And I have to tell you up front, I'm limited on space as far as where I work from um, to uh, place my camera any other way other than the direction that I'm doing it. Uh, right now um, but I can 
back it off and you know either pan out or come in closer if that's what I need to do to help you guys to be able to see what I'm doing so just let me know um, I'm gonna take this butterfly and I'm actually I may not actually even use it as a butterfly so I'm gonna take this middle little bow that's on here and I'm just gonna nip that off I've got so many of these butterflies again. Thank you, Debbie at Kiki Sale. This is where I get these butterflies as well. So um, I use them in a lot of my stuff. I'm gonna cut this over the trash here. But I just wanted to take the little bow off of the top and you can hear the pearl drop on the floor. Okay, so, um, Okay, so here's my centerpiece. I know I've got a bunch of stuff laying around here. I need to back some stuff off here and just get started. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda try and, and do some placement first, see kinda where I want things to be uh, before I glue them on. So uh, these these bits here, I just love this lace and it's so fun to use on my projects. It just makes them pop. And um, when Candace sent it to me, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm, I'm telling you guys, she was so generous um, with her gift to me. And um, I've been really, really, really blessed to have made um, some really great friends and acquaintances um, through my YouTube channel and through Happy Birds Glitter Nest. Um, and it's, it really has been a blessing to me because if it wasn't for some of those people who have helped me out, I absolutely wouldn't still be making YouTube videos because I wouldn't have the money to be able to, um, you know, buy all the, the bits and pieces I need. I spent, um, many of you know, I spent three years taking care of my mother while she was ill before she passed away. And so I um, took a chance. I left my job uh, because I had always promised my mom that if the time came and she needed me, I would never put her into a skilled nursing facility. Um, and so I felt like I needed to make good on that promise. And I did. I took care of my mom until she passed away in 2019. And I wouldn't have had it any other way. So, but there were a lot of people, because I was very limited on income, there were a lot of people that really helped me to get through that that part of my uh, my life and had it not been for those people helping me out my channel never would have gotten started uh, my first big helper was uh, Lori Knowles of Happy Birds Glitter Nest because she was the one that encouraged me to uh, start my channel um, so for her, uh, for her assistance, I mean, it meant the world to me that she even cared enough to help me figure out how to get started and to give me the courage just to do it because I was really, really nervous about putting myself behind a camera and all that good stuff. So um, anyway, during the three years that I was caring for my mom, you know, you, you got to have something that you can do in your downtime because it can be very um, depressing if you don't, um, you, if you don't balance things out, you know, so that life can be uh, a little more bearable. So, because it's very difficult when, especially, you know, you're taking care of your mom, you know, what the final outcome is going to be when it's all said and done and it's really tough you have some really hard days and when you have something like crafting to do um, during that time to kind of keep your your mind occupied in other ways it, it really helps um, so having people that believed in me 
and that were, were willing to um, keep me going meant absolutely the world to me. So I, I say thank you um, to all of those people. And, you know, the other thing is, is I've got my Etsy shop and um, for a while there when I went back to work, you know, I wasn't, I really didn't have any time to to work, you know, with my crafts or to do videos or any of that stuff. So I was kind of stuck. And so I didn't, I didn't get a lot into my Etsy store. Um, and so my, my inventory was dwindling and, um, I just, I could, there was nothing I could do about it. I, I had to work and I still have to work. I have to get a job again. Um, uh, but for right now I am, I am not working. So I figure as long as I'm not working right now, I'm going to do whatever I can to, um, try and keep our household afloat because Jeff is, my husband, Jeff is, uh, disabled. So he's, he is on a limited income, so um, you know we need to do everything we can to kind of keep keep life moving here. And he does his part to try and you know help. He, he helps with a lot around the house and um, things like that. So uh, I'm just trying to do what I can to keep things afloat right now. So I'm really really liking the way this is coming out. I'm going to use a couple of my, my roses here, yay, and this one's probably going to be one of my favorites, I'm guessing, um, just because um, I took the time really to kind of pick out all of the bits and pieces that I really, really wanted to use here. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a couple of blingy pieces too, and I was thinking I might add a nice piece of bling to this one. Um, just kind of shooting out maybe one or two pieces, actually. I did this little heart. I had these winged hearts, or yeah, I had a few of these. And then I had some of the little um, love charms. Let me see. get to where you guys can see this these little love charms that's right down here at the bottom and um, so I, I put that on there with some e6000 to just kind of add to the heart and I really really like the way it looks so I want to try and put that in here somewhere where it's actually showing and maybe with that other little piece of bling kind of popping out as well so I'm trying to make that, I need to do this with the big end in, something like that. And that looks really, really pretty. And then I've got a couple of these little baby flowers that I'm going to pop in there in a few places. But I don't need to place those for right now. So I think I'm really happy with kind of all of those bits and pieces. Um, so these are probably the bits that I'm going to use. And we'll go ahead and start piecing this together. So I've got to get back down to the bottom of the pile here. And the first thing I'm going to put on there is this, um, this piece of lace here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of E6000 sort of across there like that. And I'm going to kind of put it a little bit cattywampus. And I'm doing this on top of wax paper. And the reason that I do that is because it, it keeps the hot glue from um, actually sticking to the surface that I'm working on. So I'm able to, this is the butterfly wings. So I'm able to at least kind of control things a little bit better and actually I think I'm going to use the other half of these butterfly wings on the opposite side 
kind of coming out this way. Yep. And I'm using, um, I tend to use uh, Gorilla E6000, or E6000, Gorilla Glue in my glue gun um, because I feel like uh, as hot glue goes, it actually um, does a really great job of continuing to hold. So that's what I use in my glue gun. Um, sometimes it can tend to get a little bit more uh, stringy than some of the other hot glues, but you know, I, I, it doesn't bother me. I've kind of learned how to get control over it. So uh, I really like the way it works. So. I continue to use that so if you haven't tried it give it a shot I think you might you might actually like the way that it works for you once you can get used to um, controlling the, the strings okay so I'm just gonna put this one off to the other side and what I really love about this lace is these these uh, silky flowers that it, that are on it because they um, they pop off of the lace and they just really make for a nice, really, really nice effect. And I'm just clipping off some little bits from the edges of this and I think I'm gonna use that piece right there. The problem is, is then I find that I start putting all my roses and stuff on top and then I start covering this up and I hate to cover it, but you, you almost have to in order to, um, you know, get this exactly the way you want it. This piece, um, I am going to use hot glue and normally I would say use E6000 on anything that is metal, but because this is going on fabric, and I'm gonna be gluing things kind of over the top of it here. I, I'm not so worried about uh, the whether it's gonna stay or not because with everything I'm putting over the top, it's, it's gonna stay just fine. So let me grab a couple of my other bits here. Let's see, where do I want you to come out from? I think with this piece, I'm actually going to cut this flower in half, and I can use the other half on something else later. And I'm just going to kind of, I want to have some of that pink kind of peeking out in some spots. And because it's kind of a dusty pink, it goes nicely with my, with my roses. Make sure I keep that in view. And then I'm going to take these bits just kind of poke them out there. And this one has a little bend in it. So I'm going to just put a tiny dot of glue there and put it down on top of that other bit of lace. This one, let's see. Ah. See, I'm covering up those pretty roses. I'm just going to kind of go one at a time here and figure this out as I go. I'm going to put one of these here, and I'm using one of the ones that I put a little pearl in the center of. <clears throat> and that one's going to go right next to it. 
I, you guys, I cannot tell you, I am so excited about these um, ribbon roses. And also the, the big ribbon roses that I've been making with the silk ribbon. I have been having so much fun using them in my projects. Um, I just, I love them. And they're, it's nice. I, if I could, everything that would go into every project I do would be handmade by myself. Um, I love to be able to say, hey, I made that start to finish, you know, and I didn't, didn't have to buy anything that was already created by someone else. Um, so for me, that's, that's fun times. <laughs> um, I'm thinking maybe a little piece of this sort of coming out somewhere. Eh, I don't know. No, I'm not going to use that. Okay, uh, let's see. I had this too, but it's just too big to use on this, I feel. And this was something that I got from Debbie over at Kiki Sale, and it was an earring, and it's so, so, so pretty. I think Debbie sent me like two or three of these. I used two of them like immediately because I fell in love with them, and I actually didn't even want to use them because I loved the earrings so much. And then I had a project that I really needed something cool and dangly for, and so I used one of them, and then I, I came up with something else and I used that one. And so I ended up, this is the last one I have and it makes me very, very sad to not have any more of them. And I don't think Debbie can get any more of those. Um, I know she had some a while, th that was from a while back. Um, but I'm very sad that I don't have any more <laughs> because they are amazing. I'm just cutting this little piece of bling. I've got this, um, hold on. I'm just trying to cut this end piece off of it. I'm gonna show you guys where, I'm, where I got this from. Um, this is some bling that I got from a friend of mine by the name of Dee, and I was, flabbergasted when she sent it to me. Um, she sent me a nice long piece of it and I loved it so much and I used it and I used it and I used it. I only had like a couple of little pieces left of it and I was so sad when I finally ran out of it because I didn't think I was ever going to have it again. And so I had actually, um, I had actually kept like those two pieces for a very, very long time. Um, and I, I finally found something that I really just, I had to use it in. And so I, I went for it, I used it. And of course it made me very sad, but you know, what good is it if you don't use it? Um, so I did. And then one day a while back, I was on Amazon and I found it. So while I had the money, I went ahead and I bought myself, um, I can't remember how, how big the piece was that it came in, but I will put a link to this in my um, description menu down below so that you guys can have a chance to get some. Hopefully you can still get it on Amazon. I think you probably can. Um, but oh my gosh, it is just so pretty and it's got all those different colors kind of bouncing off of it. So it, it you can use it in so many different projects. And that's what got me so excited about it when Dee sent it to me was the fact that I could use it in so many things and really, really get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And that's exactly what I did. And um, some of my favorite projects I've used that, um, that stuff in. And Oops, oh my gosh, I almost used my good scissors on that. I can't believe that. And 
And actually, I shouldn't be using those scissors on any of my crafting projects. Those are hair cutting scissors. I, th I think they're for hair cutting. I got those from my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was a beautician and when she passed away, that was one of the things that I sort of inherited. And I love those scissors. And the only thing I ever used them on was my hair. Um, but then I found that, you know, it worked really well to be able to cut um, some of my crafting fabrics and things because a lot of this, the regular scissors you get just don't cut it sometimes when it comes to cutting fabric uh, real well. So I started using them and I really never should have, but I love them. Okay. And as you guys see, I'm just kind of placing everything just kind of as I see fit as I go here. And it's coming out really, really pretty. And I'll show you what I'm thinking about possibly using it on I, if, it, if it fits the project. It may not. But I'm going to show you kind of what I think I'm going to do with some of my other ones too. And let's see. And I'll put that one right there. And then I think I'm going to take a couple of little pearls and place them in a couple of spots. And I've got my handy dandy toothpick. And what I'm going to do is take and put that pearl sort of on the end of the toothpick there. And I'm just going to find a couple of spots here that I want to land a couple of pearls in. And just just slide them off the end of the toothpick into the hot glue. And let's see, put one right there. I love appliques. Oh, I love appliques. I've I've gotten, it's funny, I didn't start out really doing a lot of shabby chic stuff, but the, the more I've crafted and sort of gotten into different stuff, the more I've enjoyed doing the shabby chic stuff. I really, really love it. And there's nothing about anything shabby chic that isn't gorgeous, if you ask me, anyway. I just think shabby chic is one of those things that I will be very sad if and when it ever kind of goes out of style, but if you think about it, it's really kind of been in forever because, um, you know, from the Victorian era, you know, everything was really uh, kind of in a shabby chic um look you know oh i think i'm going to cover up one of my ribbon roses because i want to put this one in there and i forgot about it and it's going to cover mine but that's okay i'm not going to cry it's just a little it's just a little rose that i can make another one of <laughs> and i'm putting that over the top because i want that creamy um, ivory color to kind of be sort of in the in the center of this piece so let's see do I want to use this is the big question of the day yes I'm going to use this heart with the the wings on it and I'm going to place it right there that's a perfect spot for it. Chloe. My dogs may start barking here, you guys, so if they do, I'm sorry. I'm 
no bark in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from one of these other pieces of this lace, I'm going to cut a couple of these flowers out just to kind of place them over the lace in a spot or two because I kind of feel like I lost a lot of these by, um, you know, everything else I placed on the uh, on the applique. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of this out, see if I can find a spot. And that's way too big. Let's see. Just to kind of come out of one of these these edges here. But it's also got to look right. So actually Yeah, I'm going to put a piece under that heart because there were already some under that heart, but when I put the heart down, they kind of just smashed underneath it, and then you couldn't see it anymore, so. There we go. I just want to make sure I have at least a couple of them, you know, poking out where you can see them. And this one, I'm going to cut this big piece off and poke it out. Let's see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to peel that back a little bit. And here's what happens when you're making stuff like this, you guys, you'll find that you end up covering things up that you already put down there and you expect it to have showing. It happens and it's okay because, you know, usually those items are things that you have a whole bunch of anyway and it's not like you're gonna, you're losing anything, you know, big money by doing it. Um, there you go. There's our applique. It came out absolutely gorgeous. And here's what I have. I have, um, this one may be too big for it, but I'll show you what one of the other ones looks like with it if it is. Yeah, this, this applique is a bit too big for this piece. But um, I have this, uh, in fact, let me let me back you off a little bit just for a minute here. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is a um, compact mirror that I have. This is one of the ones that I buy from my little my little local shop. And what I was thinking is, how pretty would that be with an applique over the top of it? And actually, I had placed, I want to say it's this one. Yeah, this one looks really, really pretty on this compact mirror. So I thought, you know what? I might just, there we go. Yeah, I had it in the right direction. Okay, so I might just um, go ahead and, and put that one on this um, compact because it really looks pretty and then I thought okay I have a bunch of other compact mirrors that I'm working on right now because I got super lucky and I was cleaning my craft room trying to anyway and I found some of my old compact mirrors that I had bought from Michaels a long 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 time ago probably two years ago I had a little tiny bin that had about five or six of them and I got so excited because I had some compact mirrors that I could finally do again. And um, just to show you guys, I did a really, really pretty one, this one here. And um, so I'm working on her right now. I think she's pretty much done. Um, 
but I did that one and then um, I've got a couple of other ones here that I really haven't done anything with other than putting um, an image on them so these still have to be worked on this one's got the uh, the resin over the top already let me see if I can show you that nope it's not gonna show there we go I've already resined this one this one I haven't done anything with yet but I thought you know even for something like this I have one of my appliques here wouldn't that be gorgeous just to do I mean this wouldn't be the one you'd want to put in your purse necessarily but on your um, your uh, makeup table if you've got a you know a nice uh, antique or, or Victorian style um, what do you call it I can't even think of the name of it and I'm not going to try and figure it out I had one most of my adult life and I can't even think of what it's called now but um, you guys know what I'm talking about look how pretty that is and I put a little love charm on it let's see so it looks really really pretty on that though so I thought I may be making um, some compact mirrors with the appliques on top and then I've got this one I mean even if you covered the entire top with an applique is that not gorgeous so I may be um, I may be doing one or two of these uh, coming up here so look how pretty that looks and then I just have you could even take these compact mirrors if you have any sitting around and just uh, you know use it with the rhinestones still in it and add a pretty little applique and what a great gift that would be for someone you know that you're you're wanting to give something nice to um, look how pretty that is so I don't know I'm a big I'm a I'm a fan of compact mirrors and I love making them and I just think that that just looks really elegant and pretty so I will probably be putting some of these uh, mirrors in my shop this one for sure is going in it's already actually in my shop for sale I've already listed this one um, but these are these are the uh, double double mirrored and one's a um, uh, larger and smaller you know so that you get just your regular mirror your regular view and then you've got your zoom in view if you're blind like me and can't see when you put your makeup on so anyway um that's our applique that we did today and i hope you guys enjoyed this video i really enjoyed doing it for you and you all have um I, I want to say to you, you all have really, really blessed me and my family. And for those of you who have been shopping in my Etsy store, um, recently my sales have increased. And I know it's because I've been doing more of my YouTube videos and I've been able to add more um, current items to my shop. And I just need you all to know what a blessing it is to me and my family. Um, that you've supported me and su my my channel and my Etsy store because uh, without you I wouldn't be making it right now so I really really do appreciate your support and um, please tell your friends about my YouTube channel if you think they might be interested in learning some um, new crafting skills or doing some great gifts for uh, family members or what have you please send them on over to my channel and um, if you aren't subscribed please subscribe hit the um, notification bell as well so that you'll be notified when I do new videos and um, stop by whenever you see that I'm posting a new video I'm going to be posting a lot of them here in the upcoming uh, weeks so uh, hopefully I'll be posting something you'll enjoy if there's something you definitely want me to do that you haven't seen me do yet please um, let me know and I will I, I got this suggestion from one of my subscribers and I thought it was a great idea and so um, here I am I went ahead and I did the video for her so uh, anyway 
Thanks so much, you guys. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for blessing my family. And um, I hope I can keep on doing this for a long, long time. Thanks so much. Be blessed and have a great day. Bye-bye.